for the debit fund, we used to have um, a number of students failing to pay their, their tuition fees. Uh, with the introduction of the debit fund, we found that uh, at least the needy uh, are also being catered for. But of course, um, it is, must be distinguished uh, from the bursary which is run by the Ministry of Science and Technology. Under that, we, it is clearly stated that um, I think 10% will benefit uh, if they are vulnerable. While the TEVET fund, uh, the way we have administered it is such that uh, we take care of, um, uh, it is merit-based. Uh, the best student gets the, the, the support. The TEVET fund be supported. Because what we have noticed that um, the TEVET fund has a number of, um, I think, stages uh, where it also improves the cooperation between, for instance, institutions and the, the industry. Um, we have noticed that uh, we are uh, pursuing relationships with industry or cooperation more like uh, on an individual basis as an institution. But the TEVET fund provides for that to be formalized so that it is easy to get results that are desired. In an effort to promote demand-driven training as opposed to supply-driven training, the fund, through its stakeholder governing body, has established rules for spending on training services that promote national development objectives. Inasmuch as government is spending colossal sums of money on training and infrastructure, the onus is still up to the students to ensure that they take care of equipment and infrastructure. I can only commend them and also uh, appeal to the institutions that are receiving this equipment and teaching uh, training aids to look after these uh, uh, pieces of equipment that they have received. The problem that we have in this country is the attitude towards public property. People think, no, government will provide, government will provide. Yes, it is the responsibility of government to provide. But it is also our responsibility as citizens to look after this uh, equipment. Not only equipment, you can see here where we are at Kasia, there is rehabilitation you know, going on from uh, our PRP funds, poverty reduction program funds. And um, we would only ask you know, the beneficiaries, the community, the, 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 the people that are in the institutions, administration, students, everybody, you know, to guard this infrastructure jealous. You know, the national cake is, is, is very small and we need to distribute it equitably. So if you are lucky, for instance, Kasia is lucky they've get, gotten a portion. Others are not lucky, you know. So we would only appeal to those that have gotten something to guard this equipment, this infrastructure jealously. In the long run, sustainability and expenditure on training will depend on government channeling other training resources through the fund, including resources from a possible payroll tax on employers or any other levy that will be decided upon. This idea will further leverage private spending on training and promote sustainability of the TEVET system. The TEVET fund is now operational and its operating procedures have since been approved by government and cooperating partners. To operationalize the fund, sensitization of stakeholders has been done and will be an ongoing exercise to keep the beneficiaries were informed of the developments in the fund. So far, 39 contracts have been signed with training institutions for financing. Financing categories include in-service training, small and medium enterprises, and informal sector training, among other areas. The Deputy Minister also visited Kasia Secretarial and Business College on the outskirts of Pemba. Kasia is another beneficiary of the Tevet Fund. A major infrastructure first lift is visible to all persons visiting the institution. A colossal amount of money has been spent on the renovation of the water reticulation system at the college. The college is also among the beneficiaries of the ultra-modern computers procured under the Tevet Fund. The Tevet Fund will from time to time issue public invitations for training providers and employers to access funding for various training interventions. Kasia, Secretary and Business College Principal, Wides Chisi, is grateful to government 
and the Zambian cooperating partners for sustaining the fund. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the government for the stance, the response that they are undertaking to ensure that there is quality tethered in the country. And for that, we are hoping that the money that they have put in, they have invested, will be put to good use. Other college principals are also in agreement. One such principal is Livingstone Institute of Business Studies. The TEVET Fund, which I think we need to understand what the TEVET Fund is all about. The TEVET Fund is there to assist the people that cannot afford the uh, type of training that is required. Two, it's there to address need areas of uh, government's requirements where we are falling short in terms of skills. The TEVET Fund is to address those need areas. At Libes, we have accessed the TEVET Fund on three windows. The window one, which is pre-employment. The window three, which is for building entrepreneurship in the country. And window four, which is on recapitalization of the institutions and human resource management. Uh, we were fortunate to get through or to get funding under these three windows in the understanding that one Libes was found to be capable of handling the TEVET fund under these three windows. Two, I think as you mentioned earlier on, it's the standards that have been maintained at Libes which made it possible for them to access the TEVET fund. Unlike the other three windows, preparations and submissions of proposals for in-service training under window two is done by employers on the basis of their documented corporate human resource development priorities. As of mode of earmarked financing of artisan level skilled labor force, the history of training funds is linked with the competitive pressure brought about by the globalization of trade coupled with rapid technological advancements where winners in any market are those that are best able to develop and utilize the intellectual and manual competence embodied in their human resources. In the eastern and southern African sub-region, Malawi, Mauritius, South Africa, Tanzania and Zimbabwe are some of the countries that have established similar training funds. It now waits to be seen whether TEVET stakeholders in Zambia can also work together and make the training fund a success for sustainable national economic development.